Hi, I'm Maria Trocarico. I'm a registered nurse and I have almost 40 years in human services education and consultation and administration. All of us experience stress in our lives. We experience personal stress, professional stress, health stress, family stress. It's just a part of an adult life in today's world. However, for human service professionals in particular, we're always struck with ethical dilemmas. And we have to think about every decision that we make within an ethical context. As a result of that, there are many times that our ethics come in conflict with our morals at times. Ethics are the external or organizational structure of what we do, in other words, the rules of what we do, versus our own internal value system, which is our morals. A defense lawyer cannot discuss what a client has told them, whether or not they admitted to a crime, and they have to defend them. With their own personal morals may be lying is bad, in healthcare, we run against it all the time when we're constantly struck with what are the constraints within our organization, our staffing constraints, our fiscal constraints against what we know is best for the patient. I became aware of a patient who had suffered for many years with ALS. She had progressed to the end stage where her body was completely frozen except for her eyes. None of her muscles worked except for, you know, of course, heart, lungs, but she could not voluntarily control any muscles. The staff became very concerned for her. They felt that not only was she suffering emotionally because she could experience everything around her, but she couldn't move. They also were concerned that she might be experiencing pain and they tried to medicate her as they felt appropriate, but there was no mechanism for any feedback from her as to whether or not the pain management was effective. Her husband was her healthcare proxy. He made it very clear that he was not going to change the DNR order. A little bit more investigation revealed that his main concern with it was her social security income, and he was not willing to give that up until he absolutely had to. We had several ethics committee meetings. We brought hospital administration in. We brought risk management into it. And um, we were unable to change the situation for her because of the husband's adamant insistence that she was still a full code. Everyone around her, all the professionals around her, physicians, therapists, nurses, social workers, everyone was just horrified at this woman's situation. And I think it came down to every single day, people just hoping and praying that she would draw her last breath and that she would not be able to be revived in a code. And that's eventually what happened. Um, and I think that the amount of time that we spent in processing that case afterwards assisted the staff in their grief and in trying to resolve the severe emotional distress they felt at feeling so impotent in helping her in a way that she really needed to be helped. As a leader in healthcare, I think it's extremely important to pay attention to what your staff may be saying verbally and also may be saying non-verbally. Sometimes you may notice that particularly people or even particular groups of people may be calling in sick more, maybe withdrawing from committee meetings more, um, just indicating that they aren't functioning at their optimum. And I think that checking in with staff and looking at what's going on in their cases is really important because the feeling of powerlessness from moral distress makes people reticent to talk about it. I've seen over and over and over again that if one person feels it, so do other people on their team and the other people around them. And sometimes it takes someone from leadership coming in and saying, hey, you guys, I've noticed that you're really not yourselves. I noticed, I, I understand that you're under a lot of stress. I can see why you're under a lot of stress. Let's take a few minutes and talk about this. Let's talk about what the difficult aspects of this case are. What would make it better for you? What would make it better for the patient? How can we change this in a more positive way? And sometimes that's all it takes is acknowledging that their stress and their pain. And I think the fact that they feel validated truly relieves them of a lot of the emotional burden that they're feeling. 
it should not be done in the middle of a work area. It shouldn't be done in the middle of the nurse's station. It should be done in a quiet room that can be closed, a conference room, any, you know, any room that you can find that the pe people can have some privacy and some closed off space so that they can take the risk with, with expressing their emotions. So I think that's really leadership's responsibility to make sure that a safe space is available in one way or another, and to provide that and to say to people, you know, let's go off the work area for a little while. Let's take a deep breath, have a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this. The United States is becoming a perfect experimental group in terms of response to the pandemic. The amount of stress that people has, have felt in the context of the pandemic is tremendous. We've all watched many, many people be ill. We've watched the horrible images of patients dying alone and saying goodbye on a smartphone. Staff that are completely drained and worn out and just collapsing at the end of a shift. That is playing out just about in every single corner of the United States. And I think no matter what people are doing for their jobs, we're all feeling it in one way or another. And that definitely is collective trauma. So it's just sort of depositing, depositing, depositing. And at some point, we're going to have to pay the penalty for that grief bank. How are we going to help people process this so that at the end, all of this grief, all of this trauma can be processed in a way that does not permanently damage people. We need to get the message out that people need to find venues to process it. If you are a supervisor or a manager, you need to be aware of that and you need to make time in the schedule for this activity because it is extremely important. If you are an individual and you're feeling it and you're not finding that outlet, then you need to seek it out. You need to seek out colleagues. You need to seek out family. You need to seek out someone who is going to listen to you non-judgmentally. I would strongly suggest that you seek a therapist. And there are a lot of people that are providing therapy online now, and a lot of insurance companies are paying for it. So in one way or another, you really need to seek that out so that we can walk out of this pandemic intact. I think that there should be webinars there should be group meetings established. I think any organization that has the power to bring people together should be looking at how are we going to plan group meetings in one way or another, whatever venue you can find, to help people identify what the signs and symptoms are of the damage that this has caused and how can people in a very healthy way work it out. The most important thing is just remember that we're all human beings that we've all dealt with this in the way that we know how to deal with it. The first thing that you need to do in order to be effective for everybody else in your life, either in your family, in your job, whatever your responsibility is, is to forgive yourself, to have compassion for yourself, to say, I'm also suffering through all that has happened in my country, all that has happened in the world. And I need to be kind to myself. And I need to say, I did the best that I could at that point and I'm, I'll do better in the future, but I did the best and I deserve to be respected for that. And every morning get up and say, I'm here, I've survived, I'm going out into the world and I'm gonna do the best that I can today. If I make a mistake somewhere, it's okay. I'll just go out tomorrow and try again. To take this course and learn about others, click on the link in the description and subscribe to this channel.